You know, I'm gonna give you a history lesson. We got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> start laughing! <laughs> and when I do, start fucking. Also, y'all did some nasty ass jokes on my ass, too. Funny jokes and unfunny jokes come out of the same birth. You fucking guys are unbelievable. Why are you laughing? Evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Why Are You Laughing? Today, not from the Vaulted Podcast Studios, uh, but again, in Craigland. And today, I'm pleased to introduce you to the great Tom Green. Uh, this is an episode people have requested, actually. And I didn't realize I was a little worried. I was like, is there going to be enough to talk about with Tom oh, yeah. Green? And then as I as I did my my research here, I was amazed at the amount of stuff that Tom Green has influenced. Like, the impact that he's had on entertainment is unreal. Like, you do not hear enough about Tom Green. So I went from being worried about this episode to very excited to do yeah. it. So uh, Mike and Craig from Very Good Show, back with me again. Hello. Hello. Um, see how natural it is? We've been together for an hour and a half. We say hello to each other. That's the magic of podcasting, folks. Hey, hey Mike, how are you? If we could peek behind the curtain for a moment. How's your week been? <laughs> so, yes, it's been a whole week. Um, so, uh, first and foremost, subscribe to uh, patreon.com slash blindmike. Get these episodes a week early, and uh, as well as a bunch of bonus content back there. And uh, subscribe to apparently a very good show as a Patreon now, too. I'm not sure if it's up yet, but it will be in the oh, next well, few maybe. days. Oh, well, maybe. It's, it's up sometime. <laughs> uh, so keep an eye out for that and go listen to these boys on Very Good Show. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Tom Green is a guy that is essentially, like, the inspiration for everything from jackass to podcasting, basically. Yeah, no Obviously, yeah, I mean, no one shit. of them. Obviously not the only one. But, like, the amount of influence he's had, he's had and we'll go over it for the next, you know, hour or so. Uh, but is is staggering. Um, but if we uh, start at the beginning with Tom Green, came from Canada, he started stand-up at 15, and he started at the same place as Norm MacDonald. Uh, right. Yuck Yucks mm -hmm. in wherever he's from in Ontario. Um, but uh, yeah, he started at the same comedy club as Norm, started when he was 15, 16 years old, um, and then did stand-up for about four years, went to college, did college radio, and something I'm going to have to ask you guys to, you know... Um, just try and remember that rap was very big in the late 80s uh, through, yeah, yeah. through the 90s. Oh, I've heard this. Remember, just keep your mind on that because it's gonna. a lot of this is going to seem very douchey to you. <laughs> just remember, it was of the time, <laughs> all right? So I'm just asking you. Try and keep that in mind as we go through some of these clips. Um, but yeah, yeah, Drake hadn't helped Canadian rap hit its stride yet. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tom Green... Started uh, like college radio. He did it with uh, Glenn Humplick, who ended up playing a big role on the Tom Green show. Yeah, yep, sure did. Um, so he did college radio with him. And he started out as like a rap <clears throat> DJ, basically, on the radio. And then they eventually evolved into like taking calls and stuff like that. But uh, what a lot of people may not know is Tom Green, much like uh, Chris Rock, the great Chris Rock, started as a rapper. Uh, so did Tom Green, apparently. So let's hear a little bit of... Uh, Organized rhyme. <laughs> That's a great name. Can, can I say? Can I say what he under the name MC Bones? Yes, under the name MC Bones, because apparently he was very thin. <laughs> yeah, take a risk like a disc, you're floppier. Uplifted, cause I'm gifted. Tough like algebra, but I'm twisted. You misfit, meet the better man. Good. Gonna razz you just like Letterman. I just yeah. like that he worked Letterman into a rap right. lyric. <laughs> but I, he's like, it seems like kind of douchey in the world we live in now, but he's not bad. That he's wasn't not, bad. He's got some flow to him. And for, you know, that's, you got to remember, that's the era of like, my name is Mike and I'm here to say. <laughs> like That kind of rap was uh, very of the time. Um, yeah. So they, they were big in Canada. I guess they won like whatever fucking award show. I don't really know what they are, but they, you know, best music video at some award show in Canada and shit like that. Like they had some play in Canada. Like he was mildly successful. Oh, man. Right. Um, well, it, I mean, you can, t it sounds very Canadian. He's like, I'm going to razz you. Yeah. <laughs> just like Letterman. <laughs> so he sounded just like Dr. Dre in NWA. Oh yeah. Um, so, and speaking of Letterman, there is a ton of Letterman, Letterman influence in oh, yeah. Tom Green. Um, like we were talking about with Gilbert Gottfried, the 90s was kind of the brink of like weirdness on TV and radio, yeah. whereas mm -hmm. a lot more, you know, the some of the people on the fringes were a lot more um, accepted. And a big part of that was Letterman. 
and Letterman was a huge influence on Tom Green. And uh, I don't think I have it in my notes or anything, but or maybe we might talk about it a little more when I get to his talk show and things. But like to the point where uh, Letterman was out in 2003. I don't know if it was just vacation or if there was some incident, but he was gone for like a week or something and had guest hosts and Tom Green hosted in uh, 2003. So he ended up getting on Letterman as a guest and then eventually guest hosting Letterman, awesome. which is pretty fucking cool. If yeah, you're just a kid cool. in Canada rapping about David Letterman okay. <laughs> to, to, you know, fill in for him one day. I'm filling in for Letterman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, they're doing that stuff on college radio. Um and uh, meanwhile, also, or I think maybe right after, the timeline's a little fuzzy. I, I, so I'm not sure if this is during uh, the radio show or right after. But then they start a public access show mm-hmm. called The Tom Green Show. And it's Tom and Glenn Humplick and some of his other buddies um, from, you know, uh, from Canada. And what they did with The Tom Green Show at the time, this astonished me uh, when I found out it was one hour without commercials. Mm-hmm. Like, I knew they didn't yeah. have commercials, but... That they filled the entire hour. Right. 50 of them. <laughs> and there was 50 of them in the first two seasons. So basically, he treated, uh, again, it's brilliant foresight and ambition and everything to have, uh, from Tom Green, to have dedicated himself to basically make full-length seasons out of his show. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, a lot of yeah. people might have the idea, let me film this dumb thing, put it on public access for a show, and see if it gets noticed. Right. Tom Green instead said... You know, hey, fucking Cheers is on 25 episodes a season. <laughs> Why can't the Tom yeah. Green show be? Right. So he made, um, he made you know, two 25-episode seasons uh, while they were in Canada. Um, eventually, that got picked up by MTV. Um, and, you know, he did a... T- well, actually, I'm sorry. First, it got picked up by Canadian television. Right. Um, and so they did uh, a couple more seasons in Canada. Then it gets picked up by MTV. And then when that happens, Tom Green is enormous. He breaks out and he's huge. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk a little more about that. I have a bunch of clips from the Tom Green show. But um, what's the what's the next clip that we have? Because right. uh, he's talking about the Tom Green show a little bit. Create your own opportunities. Yeah. So this goes to what I was saying a minute ago. Uh, the brilliance of Tom Green. And we I think we talked about this in the Gilbert Gottfried episode a few minutes ago. I mean, last week. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like we talked about Louis J. Gomez realizing like he needs to create his own opportunities because, you know, Hollywood or the industry wouldn't mm-hmm. have any interest in him. Yeah. Tom Green said, I don't even know if he said that, but he said, fuck it. Why wait for the industry to find me? I'm going to just do this myself. And he's talking about that on uh, Jim and Sam here. You might create a funny guy though, like Tom's talk show. Like you have all these things you do. You're very innovative. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, when when people don't give you a job, right. in broadcasting, I've I've just sort of, and that's sort of consistently been the case with me. I have to go make my own. Thing. Well, you went to broadcasting so school. I made well, I made the show because nobody would ever give me a show, right? And then and then you know, a few years later, you know, after MTV, you know, I wanted to do a show. Nobody was giving me a show, so I made a built a web studio in my living room. You know, right. A few years after that, I'm like, mm, maybe I'll go do stand up. You know, it's it's I'm not sort of, you know, consistently sort of getting work handed to me, so I have to create my own sort yeah. of weird opportunities sometimes. Yeah. Who who is that's the respect that guys like Tom Green don't really ever get because Tom Green kind of became a punchline. He was ref- remember he's referenced in uh, the real Slim Shady a couple oh, times, yeah. right? Yep. Um, but. A uh, family guy has a joke about Tom Green where he's just this. He became the weirdo in Road Trip that eats a mouse or whatever the fuck right. he did in that movie. Um, and that, beca- <laughs> that that kind of became how Tom Green was like identified. That's what people thought of him yeah. as. So when I found out about Tom Green's um, in the Internet show that he did, I was like, oh, that fucking guy from that. I was a kid when the Tom Green show was on. Mm, I was too. probably nine years old. Uh I think it ended in like 2000. So I was nine years old when it ended. Yeah. Um, so I never really watched Tom Green. So I kind of knew him could just how the culture identified him as this fucking weirdo. <laughs> and then you, when, when you hear him talk like that, you realize what an innovative, ambitious guy he was mm-hmm. and said, I'm going to create my own opportunities. You forget the, you know, the work and determination that goes into making just a dumb, silly show where he's yeah, pranking right. his parents. 
<laughs> for an hour every week for 50 episodes? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. The relief he must have felt when he was on MTV and he had to do 42 minutes yeah. or whatever. Well, you know, take a his, breath. The relief his parents felt when they're like, well, maybe he'll pay us back a little. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get to that. Um, yeah. Some of the stuff he did do is it's br oh. brilliant. The people he inspired, too, mm -hmm. which kind of leads me to our next clip. Yeah. Craig, was it you that I had a argument with? Not argument, but uh, we were talking about Tom Green influencing Jackass. Is that you? I can't remember. I got into a, a debate with someone mm -hmm. where they said that I mentioned Tom Green's influence on Jackass, where I was like, they kind of like not ripped off Tom Green, but like replaced what Tom Green was, was doing. doing. I feel Especially like we talked skateboarding about, we might've thing. talked about this. Well, whoever it was, was like, I don't see Like they didn't see the connection really. That might've been mm -hmm. me. Well, when you, it'll, I'm curious what you'll think when you hear Tom Green lay this stuff out. <laughs> I'm sure I'll change my mind. Real quick. <laughs> And that's when Jackass came around, right? Right yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. How many so, years after? A year after? I think it was pretty much right after. Yeah, yeah, right after. Yeah, they kind of stole a bunch of your shit, in uh, my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I know all the guys, and I, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know that it was like that so much. I don't know. I mean, they did do a lot of the exact same things that I did. Okay, that's kind of what I meant by that in more colloquial terms. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how that went down. I mean, I was surprised. I got to admit, I was surprised when I, you know, sort of woke up, the, the, you know, six months later and sort of, hey, here, you know, Bam just painted his parents' house. You know, I'm like, what? <laughs> painted the house? I mean, painted the house. They just put animals in the house, you know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know? The, the, they didn't the do that one, Johnny did Knoxville's dressed up as an old man crashing into stuff in an electric wheelchair. You know, I'm that's like, right. But that's, that's oh, yeah. What about oh, the one where, that's right. yeah, yeah, where like, the one guy gets on crutches yeah. and he puts a cast on his leg, yeah. he keeps falling down in the pharmacy. So I was kind of bummed about that at first. And, but then I kind of like, don't even know if they knew like, cause like they, right. they have like the way it works at MTV is like, there's tons of writers and producers and they're just like, you know, everything gets written down on a piece of paper and it's got to get approved by the network. <clears throat> right. And then the network says, okay, go do this. And then you're assigned something that you're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't even really know if they knew. I've never actually asked them. I don't even know if they know like that they were doing. So they bets. might just have like an MTV list of here's the pranks we're going to do. Yeah. MTV might've known this is where we got them from, but they just got this list. Well, I'll tell you that's, Pretty wild. So he, yeah. he, goes, he goes on to say that he's friends with like Steve-O and Johnny Knoxville. Like he knows those guys mm -hmm. for whatever reason. He's never asked them, um, but it is wild to think. And that kind of goes back to what we were talking about, about, you know, joke stealing and parallel thinking and shit like that, where sometimes you don't even realize the people that are involved that are just like, well, how about this? <laughs> and, you know, the MTV executives might be stealing it and they're aware. But Steve-O maybe didn't watch fucking Tom or Johnny Knoxville didn't watch the Tom Green show. Right. And he's like, oh, that's a great idea. Let me dress up as an old man. You know what I mean? Right. But there are literally like when he lays it out like that, literally bits that Tom Green did that they then again did on Jackass. Yeah. And it wasn't so uh, Jackass also. That's not saying Jackass is, uh, you know, they're thieves. thieves. That's basically just like there's a lot that Jackass became that Tom Green wasn't. You know what I mean? Tom Green wasn't getting gored by a bull and <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. Like there's a lot that Jackass did on their own and kind yeah. of created. <clears throat> but but it's just funny to see like um, as a kid that grew up more with Jackass. You know, I at least I know I wasn't a huge Jackass fan, but I at least saw the movies and shit. Mm -hmm. I love Jackass. Yeah, I, did too. I never associated them with Tom Green until I started to learn more about Tom Green. This is the first oh. time associating them. Right. Oh, I, I I actually thought it was kind of this. I thought it was the same guys when I first did it because I, I was a Tom Green fan when I when it right. was on. I used to go to my. I told you guys this earlier. I used to go to my. You're forty six like years it. old. <laughs> right. I used to go to my. Well, you didn't. I, we didn't have cable at the time, so we used to go to my cousin's house just to watch Tom Green. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go hang out with Bobby and just turn on the TV and just sit down. I was such but. a I was such a fucking dork that like I don't <laughs> I don't think I had rules like I don't think I was not allowed to watch MTV. I think like as a kid I was like oh that's probably inappropriate. For me. <laughs> that would classify as a dork for sure. I was like I, I'm probably not supposed to be like I would hear kids talk about like Tom Green and Jackass yeah. and shit. I remember like um, seems stupid. I remember I had MTV on. And uh, like my parents were in the next room or something, and uh, like the real Slim Shady video came on, and I turned it down. And I was like, "Ooh, well, Mikey's being naughty." <laughs> <laughs> but MTV is porn for nine year olds, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no. So what I was saying was the uh, the reason why I kind of associate them was so Tom Green was a big skateboarder too. Like it right. was like the same kind of right. culture and everything. Like right. he. he like would introduce like music and stuff like you wouldn't listen to. Yeah. Like he had like propagandi and shit on. Like 
You oh, forget Jesus. Yeah, just, was, just to talk yeah. about MTV as a whole. Like you, we forget the influence yeah. that Tom Green had. You forget the influence that MTV had, mm-hmm, and right. like they were for, like real world. Uh, t- like the Tom Green show, and sp- not yeah. just Jackass, but punked everything. Basically, everything, yeah, punk every comedy great. that came on MTV after after Tom Green Pit was was a, a child of was, Tom Green. Yeah, it was a chunk of Tom Green show <laughs> yeah. that they stole and made into <laughs> its own thing. Yeah, but yeah. but MTV was first with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and kind of you can probably blame MTV for a lot of the shit in our culture now. Yeah, you know, yeah. like but, in a way. I don't know. I, I always liked Jackass and Tom Green because it, it like you know you got like all the pop music and stuff on MTV, and then those two shows were the only ones that were, they were like they're playing like metal bands and like yeah. punk bands and stuff like that you wouldn't normally it's a different hear channel on there. back then. Yeah, it was just totally different stuff. Yeah, and for all the the credit that Stern and Eminem, um, I guess to an extent like NWA and and shit like that, they get a lot of credit for kind of like changing the culture and mm-hmm. railing against. You know, free speech and censorship and all that. NWA yeah. for sure. NWA oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, was, I, I halfway through my sentence, I changed the direction <laughs> I was going. <laughs> At first, I was thinking more at comedy, and then I was like, I guess these guys fit what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but um, uh, those guys get a lot of credit. Yeah. Tom Green does. It's right. weird, but right. Tom Green, you forget how much influence he had on the culture because he created all this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, two generations later, punk wouldn't exist, and that's. Super popular, like people yeah. to this day still bring up Justin Timberlake crying on punk. Oh, he thinks, brutal. he thinks his house is being repossessed right. or whatever it is. Yeah. But, but I think a lot of that is is the fact that Tom Green was the clown. Like yeah. you know, it, it was hosted by uh, punk was hosted by uh, what's his face there? Ashton Kutcher. Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. Yeah. He could be like handsome guy standing off to the side, being like, "Ha ha, look what we that was, made." That was back when Von Dutch hats yeah. were huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Tom Green was actually like what. You want me to go drink cow's milk directly from the udder? Sure. Sure, I'll go do that myself on screen. Yeah. Like, it was like that kind of shit. And John, that's where Johnny Knoxville, <laughs> with, like, the stunts and shit, was kind of able to make that more cool, mm-hmm. where Tom Green, I think, was seen as wacky. Yeah, he's a wacky as guy. Opposed to, as opposed to cool. And, as opposed to a stunt man. Right. He right, was right, like, right. I'm going to go hurt myself Tom for Green's, laughs. Tom Green's the kind of guy that shuts MTV off because his parents might hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tom Green would have gotten along real well. <laughs> um, uh, so, where I want to, I can't think of where I'm pizza. going yet. Oh, um, oh yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say one of the things. Oh, so, you know, we'll get into the Tom Green show, but I will say it ended in 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get into some of the rumors about that later. But uh, in 2000, it's funny that um, basically they kind of just took the mantle and ran with that. And you can see generationally there was always a Tom Green show after that. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. very it's very weird. But um, uh, yeah, so let's play uh, <laughs> some of the... T- this is basically, if you're not familiar with Tom Green and you're listening to this episode, to maybe learn a little more about him. Uh, I pulled some clips, A, that he's most famous for, probably. This is, like, what people remember about the Tom Green show. <laughs> but also kind of identifying, like, what we're talking about. The type of shit that wasn't done on TV before uh, the Tom Green influenced. So this first sketch is uh, a bit called Undercutter's Pizza. <laughs> See that Camaro right there? It belongs to a real pizza guy. Real. And I've got this new business idea where we're going to undercut the competition. (laughs) We're going to follow that pizza guy to his next delivery, and we're going to try and undercut the competition. Pop, 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 undercutters. Get down, get down. There he is, there he is. That's our pizza guy. Stay back, Simon and Simon style, you know. There he is over there. Keep flying. See you, see you. Okay. Oh, okay. Pull in, right, pull in. Let's <laughs> order the pizza? Yeah. What toppings did you guys want on your pizza? Extra cheese. Uh-huh. Extra cheese, okay. <laughs> here we go. This is here. No, no, we're from Undercutters. <laughs> yeah, pizza. No, no, how much how is much? it? How much is yours? Get the hell away from me. No, you get it cheaper from me, though. I really don't give a f. Get out. <laughs> so you can get cheaper for me if you want. I've got three seconds to get out of here. It's good a tackle a box full of vegetables. <laughs> get out of here now. Wait. Let the f go again. Okay, but this is a new business. It's uh, called under. I'm a new business. It's right up your ass. Hey, hey. Get your yeah. f- shit out of here. No, don't. This is shit out of here. Now, I'm a dickhead. We were gonna give it to you cheaper. Whatever. We're just trying to start a new business here. It's a creative. Well, started by advertising like normal people. No, no, I want to. Ex- no, why do you gotta be a moron? Do me a favor. And advertise somewhere else. Okay, I'm sorry, but you know we just go up to where the pizza people. Shut your f- 
<laughs> what a Dude's time chasing capsule. him with a hammer. With a hammer. What a and time a, capsule. That guy's wearing a bum equipment shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and all I can think of as I'm watching that sketch is like no one talks about Tom Green, mm -hmm. and yet True TV would not be a channel without this man. Yep. Oh, <laughs> all yeah. I play is 24 hours of impractical jokers Great all, program. Day, all day, every day. <laughs> Great and program. That's where this started. Every dumb sketch show, I mean, a, a prank show that TBS has ever put out. Oh, yeah. Um, to the ones we already mentioned. And the other thing I was thinking, I don't know, timeline wise, I'll have to look at the, how this lines up. Um, but I think there's clear influence from uh, the Jerky Boys as well. Like for in in Tom Green, like oh I think yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that. Where like Letterman was my first thought when I was watching a lot of this shit, but definitely like uh, Andy Kaufman and the Jerky Boys yeah. probably played a big role in Andy Kauf. I was gonna say Andy Kaufman in yeah. a couple of minutes, but like going hit like a, a guy going out to elicit like a real response from actual people without right. letting them in on the joke first, <laughs> right? Is like that. That's fucking Andy Kaufman. Yeah, and so many shows have done this fakely, where the, exactly the, the, the people are in on it or whatever. But this is like Tom fucking Borat was probably in Florida. you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Like this yeah. is Tom, this is Tom Green putting his life in jeopardy. <laughs> this guy's like, this guy literally could, walking after him with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The other the guy could have pulled out a gun. Like who the fuck knows. <laughs> And Tom Green is like not trying to under, undercut him on price. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, for he's like, you don't understand. We undercut. Like he keeps explaining it. <laughs> like how you sitting there, guys pushing away, sprinkling cheese on I the know. pizza. <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. This is my business. Like, don't you understand? This is my business. <laughs> <laughs> but you advertise like a normal business. This next, this next one is maybe my favorite thing he's ever done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, you let me know on you know Twitter or whatever on patreoncom slash mic, wherever you want to let me know. Is that I can't think of another like hidden camera type prank show at least in this style that came before Tom Green. Well the thing with his hidden camera is it was right in the open. Yeah, the <laughs> guy just walked behind him. <laughs> well there there was some shit with that wasn't clearly. Right, yeah, but like yeah, in, the, in this case, yeah. I wish there was they had a camera guy filming the camera guy cuz you know he's got one of those giant cameras I from know. back then. <laughs> right. And he's trying to run away with one of those. Another guy with probably a cost Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to run away with one of those from a guy with a hammer it probably costs like a thousand dollars like shit. <laughs> um, what's the next one you just mentioned? The Slutmobile. <laughs> Yeah, this so this is probably his most famous <laughs> this is great. one. It's so it's for a good reason. Um, so, if you can't tell by the title, um, Tom Green takes his uh, his parents' car out for a uh, a tune up, <laughs> and and this is what he did. So, if you don't know, by the way, Tom Green's parents played an enormous role Huge. in in the Tom Green show. He basically pranked his parents all the time, Huge. and part of the beauty of it was they're this very quiet reserved Canadian. like Canadian <laughs> extremely Canadian <laughs> you've seen a April and Phil Margera you yeah. understand his parents exactly uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah right where Ben Margera is just a white trash Tom Green yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so his his parents are these these quiet reserved um people yeah. that Tom would just fuck Fuck two, with to no end. Two people who are just not prepared for this. <laughs> not at all. And uh, and yeah, you'll see a little bit of that with his dad in this yeah. slutmobile sketch. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, and I think my parents really like lesbians. So to show my parents how much I love them, I've turned my parents' vehicle <laughs> into more than just a vehicle. I've turned oh, it into second. a But you just describe it for the audio listeners. Uh, <laughs> there's a woman getting eaten out on the hood of the vehicle. <laughs> And it's blurred out on the screen, but it's really there in real life. Oh, yeah. Right. So, and it says the slot mobile. Yeah. So now that you've, uh, you know, a visual painted, now we can continue. <laughs> Won't mom and dad be surprised and overwhelmed tomorrow morning when they get up to go to work? So I'm hiding inside a box right now in my parents' driveway uh, that normally contains garbage. And this box is right beside the car in the driveway. Okay, so it's daylight now, uh, and my parents hour. seem to be awake because the light in the house is on. I hope my parents like my gift. <laughs> I hope when they come out of the house, they really enjoy the car that I painted for them. Their car. <laughs> You like it, Dad? Come look at it, Dad. Go we'll talk to your mother. I'm going to work. What? What's the big deal? A big deal. That what? better be off. It's permanent. Come look at it. That's permanent. 
What do you mean? I'm out of the police right now. What, what are you talking about? Yeah. Dad, it's a present. It's, yeah, right. It's a but, present. Well, it's completely untasteful and ridiculous. <laughs> Why? Where are you going? You're walking? Why can't you take the car? So, so uh, yeah, the, the beauty of that is you can tell, like, imagine his parents when he's doing this for public access, making no money on it, thinking like, what is this jackass doing? Like, what, what is wrong with the moron that we raised not seeing, like, where it would go? In the full day, version, you know? too, I believe the mother, they have videotape of her driving it around town. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, uh, one thing I should mention also is like I said, they filmed the 50 episodes on public access or whatever it was, then, you know, 20 something more on um, mm-hmm. uh, on Canadian television. So he, there was a decent chunk of episodes before he got to MTV. So MTV just chopped those up and ran them. Yeah. Um, and so Tom Green was only really on MTV, like the Tom Green show only filmed with MTV for like a year. Right. But they just yeah, had this, inti- this backlog of episodes of that they would run them nonstop on uh, on MTV. Do you imagine trying to fill that much time? How dangerous the ideas must have gotten towards the end. Oh, my. And then <laughs> well, but also trying to top yourself. Like, yeah, exactly. You hear like O&A talk about this a lot with like shock jock radio, where every day it was like, well, we have to top ourselves now. You know what I mean? Like we had a girl fucking stick a wiffle ball bat up her pussy. Well, what's what's more crazy than that that we can do the next day? Tom 500, Green, five hundred gallon vat challenge, <laughs> right? Tom, Tom Green had to do that too, where he's like, "All right, I already fucking uh, painted my parents' uh, uh, car and made it the slut mobile that my mom had to drive around town. What can I do crazier than that?" Um, so he does some home maintenance as well. If we can play, by the way, folks, paints the house. If you're not, uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, you should be. This is more of a visual bit, yeah. ironically for me. But uh, make sure you watch on YouTube for God's sake. Subscribe and give us a like. It helps the algorithm, as they say. Yeah. Um, but this is it. Tom's parents leave him home for the week with uh, to take care of the house. <laughs> Sounds smart. I'm gonna get some paint and. Uh above and beyond the call of duty in the chores department for my parents and uh, I've decided to paint their house for them for a little surprise. I think my parents will be happy when they come home and see that I've done some work around the house and not just lazed around on my ass all week. There he was, the car pulled up. It looked like he liked it at first. I thought my mom kind of liked it too, but well, I, well. You painted the house? Oh, marvelous. Have you got a job and a half? The, That's, car, uh, the car is gone. I did all the lawn too. I bought it. My car. My car. My car Big will be sold. I'm calling the guy. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You have two days to get that painted back. What are you talking about painted back? Paint, painted white, the way it was. That's what are you talking about painted white? I just worked two days painting it. The car this will couldn't be, be sold. happening. What it can mean? be happening. Yeah. My dad was what threatening to, to sell my car. The car that he bought for me. My, my car. You can't sell my car. I did it to be nice. I painted the house to be nice, Dad. Sold. Sold car. No. Yeah. What are you talking about? Every every sketch we watch. It didn't even show the house. Yeah, it didn't even show the house. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't care about the visual aspect of this. <laughs> <laughs> we can put that in in post. The house is plaid, folks. <laughs> um... Every every sketch we watch, uh, I think of another fucking influence of Andy Milanakis. Oh, that was on TV. big time! Clearly, I, I just, oh. it dawned on me just the way he was talking. Yeah, clearly Andy Milanakis. Uh, um, I've been thinking uh, Nathan for you too. Nathan for you for yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, Nathan for you. By the way, we might have to do just an episode about that. Just how fucking brilliant that <sighs> oh, show so is! Funny. Brilliant, unbelievably funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tom Green inspired all. That. And like, like I said again, he's not obviously not alone. Like the Jerky Boys and Letterman, mm-hmm. like I mentioned. And I'm sure there's others that I'm missing that I just wasn't aware of. Um, but but yeah, Tom Green definitely deserves any, more more credit. Yeah, any definitely. wacky morning show in the era before they stopped letting them do real prank calls. Right. That's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that kind of went hand in hand, where mm-hmm. like the culture was shifting towards that between yeah. everything on MTV, Stern, um, all, you know, kind of the dawn of the internet, the early days of mm-hmm. the internet, all that shit. Tom, I'm basically, Tom Green inspired the internet too. Tom Green created everything. This should be the name, <laughs> the, na- the name of this episode. Tom Green created everything. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> um, uh, I think we have another. 
Do we have one more from uh, the Tom Green show? Yeah, this is... Um what was it called? Uh, wake up, wake call. up call. Basically, yeah. I pull, every clip I pulled is like, Jackass did this, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a, a wake up call for his parents. Hi, we're on the street in front of my parents' house. It's 3.30 in the morning, Sunday night. Real my parents TV. have to work tomorrow. <laughs> and they have to get up early to work tomorrow. So it's 3.30 in the morning right now, Sunday night. We're going to go in and we're going to wake them up and we're going to see if they want to watch a Bon Jovi live in New Jersey videotape with me. Let's go. Okay, the, the problem here is the dog starts barking usually. So we're going to have to go quick. Yeah, pop on the sun gun. There goes the dog. Go, let's go, let's go. Hey, uh, Mom? How are you guys? Oh, Tom. Oh, uh, you guys want to go uh, watch this Bon Jovi? No, thanks. Tom. Come on, come on, can we just go down and watch it? Tom, would you turn off the camera and I'll come out in a second. Are you going to watch the movie? Uh, uh, we'll negotiate this. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to go to bed. Why do you have to come in the middle of the night? Well, I just we it was a whim. We thought it would be yeah. fun. What the hell time is it? Ten to fun. three, forget it. I have to get up in about three hours. <laughs> I have to yeah. get up early tomorrow, too. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get up early tomorrow, too, he says. <laughs> the beauty of this, because like when I watch uh, Impractical Jokers, um, I always think like, how are they not getting recognized? Like, there are mm -hmm. certain things about it that I'm like, is this real? In that sketch, uh, or whatever you want to call it, um, I think you can tell how real it is because any other, like, if, you, if the parents were in on it, they wouldn't acknowledge that they're aware of the camera. They would be more, like, right. mad. These people are just, like, aware that the camera is on and, like, Trying to be polite. <laughs> just yeah. like, you jackass. Can we can't, you say, we, we can't say we hate our son on television. <laughs> and even, so, we're about to play an interview clip with them, and I think you can tell the dad still has very underlying seething rage <laughs> <laughs> about these days where, like, you can he, see it in his face. He's a, very, he's a very old school yeah, guy he's that real, doesn't he, like that he had to put up with the shit from his dumb son. <laughs> he's I, a real disappointment face. Yeah, Mr. Green was not understanding the impact that his son had on <laughs> culture and society. Right. But, but uh, let's hear a little bit from uh, the Green family. And that was, what were what was really going on at the time? Were you guys really mad at me when we did that stuff? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was mad because um, I... My mom and my sister were coming to visit that day, and I thought you didn't want you had to get this off the hood of the car <laughs> the because they would think my life was totally out of control. You know, yeah. they lived out of town, and I didn't see them that often. And that's, I think, around the time when I realized that maybe you you were kind of like conservative or something. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't like, even deal with like, some uh, pornography on the car. Yeah, like hello. <laughs> You can, you can tell there's a little like dad's nor, norm. <laughs> dad's dad's not a fan of this. <laughs> no, no, he's not. You can tell there's a uh, norm influence in Tom Green too. Oh yeah. I mean, like I said, they started at the same comedy club. Norm would do Tom Green show a lot that we'll talk about in a minute. But um, uh, you can tell just by the way he talks. Maybe it's just a Canadian thing that I'm putting together. But but you can tell he was definitely influenced by Norm as well. And uh, it's weird. The kind of that he was able to do all this shit so early because what you're watching them on is uh, I, I don't know if this is the MTV talk show that only lasted about three months, I think, mm -hmm. um, or what came after that was um, the uh, his uh, Tom Green Live, his Internet show. Um, right. But uh, uh, like he was one of the very early podcasters, like one of the first podcasts. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll talk about that a little more in a second. But Tom Green show ended. Um, because Tom Green got uh, cancer. He got testicular cancer, and uh, they were worried it was spreading to his lymph nodes. We couldn't get we couldn't get the clip of this, right? No. For whatever reason, it wouldn't download. I don't know download. what was going on with it. Um, so it would have been better to have Tom Green explaining this instead of me, because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh -huh. But basically, uh, they had to do a surgery where um, I think it was elective in the sense that uh, they weren't, the cancer had not spread to his lymph nodes, but they were worried it might basically. So they kind of opened him up and just rooted around in there. Mm -hmm. And Tom Green was like, I want to do that. I'd rather do that now than find out in six months or whatever. Right. Um, so that, you know, obviously took a lot out of him and everything. And so he stopped doing the show. 
and they had all those like backlogged episodes. So uh, he just never went back to doing it. However, <laughs> there was a rumor of um, why the Tom Green show ended. And that is because um, allegedly people threw out there that uh, Tom Green dressed up as Hitler and showed up at a random kid's bar mitzvah. <laughs> 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 and Tom Green got Tom Green got that question so many times that he eventually had to write in his book, this did not happen. <laughs> he was like, I, I wouldn't do that. It's crazy. Uh, I wouldn't have done that. And he's like, find the clip of it. But it doesn't exist. So I dare you to find the clip. Um, so that is not why the Tom Green show ended, although some people like to believe that because it is funnier. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, Tom Green show ends in 2000, but then he was still, uh, you know, kind of affiliated with MTV and everything uh, over the years and uh, ended up getting, I think they call, just called it like the new Tom Green show or something. It was a late night talk show. Like I said, he guest hosted for Letterman. Um, I think someone at MTV saw that or maybe he pitched based on this, based on his guest hosting, but he loved Carson and Letterman. And wanted to do that type of talk show. So MTV gave it to him. It only lasted three months, which kind of makes sense just because, like, the kids that watch MTV aren't also watching. They're not like, boy, yeah. I wish Johnny was on this channel. <laughs> you know, I wish fucking Dave was doing his uh, wacky, yeah. uh, stupid human tricks on MTV here. Uh, they don't really give a shit about that stuff. So it just didn't really work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll get it more into uh, his internet show in a bit. But what's our uh, next clip? The Bum Bum Song. The Bum Bum Song. Yeah, so again, this was of the time. Try and remember that, folks. I don't think... when you It's amazing, like, when you hear the phrase, uh, this doesn't hold up well, it's always associated with, like, tasteless jokes. Yeah. I don't agree with that. This doesn't hold up well. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a number one song on TRL. Ugh. And there's a weird backstory that I was kind of confused by. He retired it on top, too. Well, so yeah. you were, well, do you know why though? No. <laughs> Evidently it's because, uh, MTV management made him. Um, so it was number one on TRL, but then the next week they had a pre-recorded episode where they didn't play oh. the bum bum song, but the executives at, MT- at MTV didn't want to pull back the curtain and show that TRL wasn't live all the time. Oh, yeah. the L part wasn't real. <laughs> yeah, the L part didn't, wasn't always, uh, didn't always hold true. So they had some remote broadcast that was pre-taped. So, so they had, they told Tom Green to make it look like he just wouldn't play the song again because it was number <laughs> it would have been number one otherwise. <laughs> but, well, good uh, for them for actually taking real votes. Yeah. That's funny. So uh, this is a little bit of the Bum Bum song that swept the nation. <laughs> My bum is on the gum, my bum is on the gum I can blow a bubble with my bum 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 My bum is on the ship, the battle ship I hope they don't shoot the cannon in my bum <laughs> Poo all over the place Poo Cause that is very fun When they shoot a cannon in your bum I like to put my bum on things It's fun for everyone Another thing Tom Green inspired, every Nickelodeon show. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Anything that's ever been on Nick was inspired by Tom Green. He inspired Blippi, or anyone with kids. You know what I'm I'm saying? I'm not familiar. I always remember, my bum is on the Swedish. (laughs) My bum is on your lips, is what I know, from (laughs) The the Real Slim Shady. Um, And uh, he also references Tom Green fucking a dead moose in that song, if I'm not mistaken. (laughs) Right. Um, So, yeah, like all all that stuff was obviously uh, taken from Tom Green, but it's just funny, like... Even the impact of that song getting into an Eminem song, like, and still this guy didn't get the respect he deserved. It's yeah. angering me more and more. <laughs> it was a humongous hit. Yeah, this is like the Dane Cook episode all over again, where I'm like, why can't this guy? I'm like becoming a fan of him as the episode goes along. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was nice to see Tom Green, uh, you know, resurge his rap career <laughs> through through the Bum Bum song. Um, <laughs> Uh, he also married uh, Drew Barrymore Shout you know, out During this time So he was super famous As much as I'm saying He didn't get enough credit He was super famous yes. During this time So like he left I think it was after The Tom Green show It ended um, Drew Barrymore Cast him in Charlie's Angels uh, Well I think Tom Green Tells the story here I'll, I'll tell, yeah. let him tell it I met Drew when she hired me to be in Charlie's Angels. She, uh, my show was, uh, I had a hit show on That's MTV. when you met her? Is when she yeah. cast you in the yeah. film? That's where I met her, yeah. Oh, I thought she put you in because you guys were yeah. dating. Yeah, people do think that. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like a Roseanne, Tom Arnold type no, situation. No, no, no. I, I had the number one show on MTV. Yep. And she basically, you know, and the studio were 
trying to get me in that movie for a while. I actually passed on it initially, but, Pause but uh, then I did the movie. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I feel a little of the uh, anger that I've shown for Tom Green. I feel like you can kind of see it in that clip yeah, where the guy's right. like, oh, I figured she'd just put you in it because he's like, well, I had the number one show on MTV. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I turned it down. Didn't even want to do it. <laughs> you think I was canceled, Jerry? Canceled? <laughs> <If> you, <yeah. laughs> Larry, Larry King, are you not familiar? <laughs> 75 million viewers. <laughs> <laughs> we went out on top, Larry. Um yeah, so I feel like you, there was a little bit of that. And if you listen to him now, like with the clip we heard on uh, Jim and Sam and everything, yeah. he's a very nice Canadian fellow. Yeah. As uh, Craig pointed out before the show, I love the way he says the letter T. <laughs> Undercutters <laughs> and uh, shit like that. Buttons. Buttons. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that a little bit of that anger is simmering under the surface. Mm -hmm. But let's hear a little more about Drew. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, you know, went out on a date and then we got married uh, two and a half years later. So it was, it was, uh, it was, it was an uh, interesting time, but you know. Oh, that was us. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Sorry I interrupted that. Um, another influence, Pete Davidson. <laughs> Banging every piece of ass in Hollywood, yeah, being right. the, the silly guy from SNL. Tom Green did it first. That's right. <laughs> right. Tom Green did it first. I'm changing the episode title. <laughs> Tom Green did it first. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, good for him. They only, I think they were together like three, four years, whatever he said. Yeah. Um, and then he went on uh, Drew Barrymore's talk show. A couple. I guess they didn't speak for like 15 years, uh, oh, but they had a pretty nice discussion. I don't know if it was ugly or it just, you know, you part mm -hmm. ways and there's no reason for They didn't have kids or anything, so there's no reason yeah. for them to talk. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird seeing him on uh, Drew Barrymore, like talk to them about, you know, formally being together. Because mm -hmm. uh, Tom Green was on Rogan. I don't think I included the clip, but like during the pandemic... Tom Green just got in a van and like, yeah. like lived in his van with his dog <laughs> yeah, and just drove around the country and shit Ate like that. A lot of canned food and stuff. And yeah. so it's funny, like being on your ex-wife's talk show is like one of the biggest actresses ever. Fucking, I know. She's got it now. She's going to be the new Ellen or yeah. something, yeah. you know? <laughs> so that is weird, but um, uh, I don't know. It's does, a, a strange footnote in Tom Green's life. Does he have any kids? I don't think so. No, no. I don't think so either. Wow. I don't think so. Um, I think the reason, like everything we're talking about, is kind of centered around why didn't he get more credit? And I think it comes down to three words: Freddie got fingered. Oh, <laughs> which was yeah, which was uh, the the big bomb of his career. He wrote that movie. Did either of you guys see it when it first came out, oh, or when it first came out on DVD? I think. Yeah, was it like started. stupid funny? I don't even remember. It was so it, long ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I only, it's, it's one of those that, like, based on the title, I was like, I'll probably never watch that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that kind of that I, really hurt him. However, I prefer to remember Road Trip and mm -hmm. um, uh, Stealing Harvard. That's my favorite Tom. Stealing Green movie. Harvard. Stealing Harvard. I never saw Road oh, Trip. Uh, Stealing Harvard's actually it it's holds so up. So fucking. That's funny. actually a really funny movie. Road Trip. He's very funny in, but again, I think that that's how he got painted for whatever reason. Like, obviously, he was playing a role. Yeah. And again, when you hear him in interviews, he's not that guy, but people thought of him as the fucking mouse eating weirdo, weirdo. from Road Trip. Right. Um, but uh, uh, God damn it, there's a clip associated with what I was just talking about. <laughs> and I can't think of what it is. The, the Razzies. Razzies? The Razzies, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Razzies, if you're not familiar, which I didn't realize is short for like the Golden Raspberry Awards. Yeah. I never knew that. I, I thought, thought it was just Razzies. I, I thought it was like, we're razzing you. <laughs> yeah. I think that is what it is. <laughs> um but uh, so Tom Green got the Razzie Award for Freddie Got Fingered and uh, good for him for being mm -hmm. the first. I think there, there was like some director that would. But Tom Green was the first performer ever to show up and accept his Razzie. <laughs> so I think this is him like outside the award show or something yeah. talking. But this is a little bit of it. that's funny. Yeah. Well, this is a, an exciting day for me. You know, I uh, I, uh, I made a great movie, you know, I, and I set out to make a crazy movie, and here I am. I'm getting a lot of attention for it, and it's exciting. I'm getting acclaim, and I'm overwhelmed by it. You know, when I, when I made this movie, I didn't think that I was going to get this much, um, you know, praise and adulation. So I'm very happy. From, from day one, when we started writing it, said... Uh, we wanted to win a Raspberry Award, so so uh, it's, I'm glad my dream has come true. Uh, I'm very proud. I'm happy. I'm excited, and uh, and I'm very. It's a very proud day for me. Thanks very much. What <laughs> emblematic a trash truck in the background? Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good for Tom Green. I, I think people may have followed suit after him, uh, but again, sure. first guy to do it showed up at the Razzies and said because that's that's the way you do it, and I'm surprised. 
I think now, because that would have been all over fucking Barstool and, you know what I mean? It would have been trending yeah. on Twitter and shit. Yeah. If he did that now, people would be like, oh, good for Tom Green. Uh -huh. I guess in 2001 or whatever this was, that just wasn't the case. Um, you know, like word didn't spread as quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I'm surprised, like, that wasn't able to kind of offset whatever damage Freddie Got Fingered did. I, I cannot recommend stealing Harvard enough, though. Yeah, that what is, I don't even know what it's about. It's about a dude who um, promises to pay his niece's college tuition, <laughs> yeah. I think, okay. and she gets into Harvard, so he has to get a lot of he money. Has to and pay for it. That's a fun premise. I like yeah, it. I'll, it's, I'll it's, it. it's, it's a very funny movie. All right, I'll check it out. Um, get me back on track here. I missed anything either in my notes or our videos. Here. No, we're on track. We're, next one is uh, Rogan was inspired by... Yeah, so another fucking thing, yeah, Tom Green. It, so Rogan always gives credit to two people um, for inspiring his podcast. Anthony Cumia, mm -hmm. which he seems very specific in not giving Opie as much credit. Yeah, sure doesn't. <laughs> but but uh, uh, he credits Anthony for like doing his web show. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this, uh, but let's hear where else he got his inspiration from. But what it's I'm saying open. is people forgot how big it used to be. Oh, yeah. they, they, yeah, they may have forgotten forgot how big well, it was. Well, yeah. what he, in Tom all Green fairness, the, one of the man. What Giant. he did was Giant. he did what we're all doing way before any of us, but it was when bandwidth was too expensive. He right. did. He had his oh own God, podcast. Says, I did it. You did? I did it at his house. It was part of the inspiration for me doing one. Yeah. And, and, and I even oh, talked really? to his. Yes. <laughs> I even talked to his company. They were based in Denver. I was in Denver doing the comedy work. So I talked to the company that was doing it for him. And I was seriously considering doing something like that. But the problem was. That it like the bandwidth is crazy expensive. He had c cables running from the desk all the way through his living room into a server room. He had a server room wow. at his house, and it was crazy. I go, how much money is involved in this? He's like a fuckload of money. Isn't it bizarre that you could get Joe Rogan, Sal Volcano, Ashton Kutcher, and Sasha Baron Cohen in a room, <laughs> and Steve O, and they could all thank Tom Green for their <laughs> careers? <laughs> I would love that. They but, should. Yeah. So uh, Tom Green started like an internet show. And it was basically the same kind of setup as his talk show on MTV. Oh, I forgot we got to talk a little more about his MTV talk show, too. Um, but it was basically set up. He's behind a desk. He has a guest on, and they talk for an hour or whatever. So it both inspired kind of like other networks trying to do late night and talk shows and things like that. But obviously more directly, like what podcasting has become. Mm -hmm. Um so, uh, shout out Tom Green for that as well. And I want to add one more to the list. What I forgot was about his uh, MTV talk show. There was a big incident. I think this was the first episode of the show. Um, and Tom Green's known, obviously, for, you know, wacky bits. <laughs> um, so they wanted to make the first episode of his show wacky and zany. But Tom Green was not in on this. Um, so, uh, what's the guy's name? Jesse James. Uh, what's his last name? Did I write it down? Is this the one? Are you talking about the uh, desk? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Jesse, yeah, is fuck. the name is the name in front of you there, Mike? No, I can't remember his name. Jesse James something, whatever. <laughs> Someone I don't know or care about really <laughs> was uh, some musician was on the first episode of his show, and uh, comes out with a chainsaw, and does this again. Uh, part of it may be a little more visual, but I think I start where Tom Green um, reacts to it. <laughs> So, uh, who, who told you you could saw a desk up? <laughs> just cut it in half with well, the chainsaw. I checked my bank account and I had just enough to pay for one just like this. Yeah, okay. So I figured what the... <laughs> I hope so, because you're going to have to. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, all right. That's no, what actually, record, send a bill to the record company. What's that? That's what record company. Okay, no, I hope they're prepared for pay for it, because I'd be go. awesome. I'm pissed off right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, no, I'm actually kind of really pissed off right now. <laughs> Are you, are you angry about this? Yeah. He told me to do it. No. <laughs> Throws the producer under the bus. Someone had to know. The guy's just not going to go out there with a fucking chainsaw. chainsaw? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you can tell Tom Green's genuinely pissed. He's very mad. And he doesn't get like that ever. And no, and but you could look at that and say like, what the fuck are you doing, Ty? You did this shit. Do you think your parents loved every time you fucking painted the house plaid? Or, I know. You know what I mean? So you're like, what the hell? But then he goes on to explain it. Um, and, and what his reasons were for reacting like that. This next clip here. One second. Well, so in the show, okay, we had a, I had, I had a desk. It was a replica of Johnny Carson's desk. Okay. Mm -hmm. We had it built. Okay? We had it built. So it looked exactly like the 1970s version of Carson's desk. It was expensive. 
I had to Pause lobby second. MTV to, to. If you know anything about like the prestige that Johnny looked at his career with, imagine telling him like uh, t- Tom Green has the same desk as you. <laughs> <laughs> if he knew who Tom Green was. <laughs> Hire a production company to a prop house to build this desk. It was expensive. They didn't want to do it. I, I convinced them to do it. Okay, so we have this this bit where we were, we were invited uh, Jackal on the show because he plays a guitar yeah. with a chainsaw on it. We thought it was cool. He's going to come out. He's going to cut up a bunch of logs and play guitar. And we're going to talk about him as, about his band. It's going to be awesome. So unplanned. It's a very Canadian idea. It's like, we're going to have you cut logs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So unplanned, he comes out and he saws up my new desk, right? My new desk, which I'm, of course, had just lobbied MTV to spend $10,000 on <laughs> to build, you know? And now he's sawing it. And I know I'm going to be in trouble because they're sure. going to think that I told him to do it. So I got mad. So here's the fun. Here's the part that's misunderstood because it's very, it's very. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to this. Okay. <laughs> so I got mad, but while I was getting mad, to me in my head, I was thinking, "This is fucking awesome." Like I'm mad right now. We're on a show. I'm mad. I'm mad at him for doing something crazy. It's way funnier if I'm mad than if I'm you know, clapping along. Yeah. Yay. He's cutting my desk. Great TV. It was, it was, it was my first real moment on the show on this nightly talk show we were doing on MTV where it was, it was like when I, when I start when I wanted to do a talk show when I was a kid, it was cause I loved Letterman and I, lo- I loved Letterman when shit went wrong on Letterman. Like when Crispin Glover tried, tried to kick Letterman or yep. Harvey Pekar would come on and you get mad at him, call him an asshole, or when Madonna called him an asshole, or when Cher called him an asshole. Uh, you know, when shit went wrong, Andy Kaufman comes on and gets, you know, in a fight with, you know, all that stuff was what made Letterman exciting. And so here it was, this was the moment, this was like, man, I'm really pissed off right now. That's just smart broadcasting. Yeah. And it's something I have to be better at. Like, it's a skill I admire because I don't have that. I'm kind of the guy that's like, as much as I, lo- it's weird because I love that type of radio or TV, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I'm in that moment, I'm like, I, I don't like confrontation. So I try to avoid it. Um, but it's, it's brilliant instinct to just kind of embrace that. Um, and uh, I had another point about this that I'm now forgetting. God damn it. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we talked about the Letterman influence as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, it's very clear in that. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Is um, I just rambled until I thought of it. <laughs> um, Natural. It, look it good. Is, it, is kinda, it is kind of, it is kind of sad is too extreme, but like, it's tough to watch a guy that clearly, I think he wanted to be more Letterman Carson than zany MTV guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's really what he wanted to do mm-hmm. is do some of that wacky shit, but on a, maybe on a talk show a respectable or talk show. Yeah. Like, I think he wanted that, like that format a little more, but was never able to really do it. Like his internet show lasted for a long time, but he was just doing that on his own. Um, they should have had, uh, had him on the new Jackass movie to blow up his parents' garage or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of a shame that you see him kind of like wrestle with that, you know, duality or whatever you want to call it, where he could never quite, he never quite fit that mold that he kind of wanted to, even though he was super successful with what he started with. Uh, he was just never able to make that shift, really. I do enjoy the uh, the guy that had the guitar chainsaw, mm-hmm. if, yeah. going back to that clip. He, you could tell he's like, oh, someone told him that this was going to go over huge. And then Tom was pissed and he's just sitting like, there like, what the fuck? He's like, this guy uh, told me to do it. <laughs> shit, he's actually mad. This is uncomfortable as fuck because I'm not that known. Yeah, he's like, isn't that your producer? I didn't just listen to a random guy. <laughs> yeah, it was the dude in the front row. Like, I just walked in the door. Yeah, I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> um, what, what do we got next? Uh, the last clip. Last is, clip? Well, yeah. then we want to talk about the, uh, the fact that he jumped. He Tom walked off an interview with Jiminy Glick. Oh, yeah. So he wrote about that in his book. I was surprised by this, and I couldn't find the video, um, unfortunately. But for those of you that don't know who Jiminy Glick is, it is a Martin Short character Mm -hmm. that had a show called Primetime Glick on Comedy Central. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That was not bad. That was was a great impression. Surprisingly, not bad. (laughs) Um, I didn't say anything. I just made noises. That was good, though. We we got it. Um, No, did he. (laughs) (laughs) So... Uh, I guess uh, Jimmy Glick made fun of uh, Tom Green's testicular cancer, like made some joke about it. <laughs> and it got to the point where Tom Green got pissed and walked off set. 
Um, and the episode never aired. Mm. Uh, I thought maybe I could find it. You know, they released it in some sort of bloopers thing or something, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So if you can find it, send it to me. That's but a weird thing for him to get mad at. That's what I was very surprised by. It. He wrote about it in his book. Um, said he just didn't like it. It was a weird feud he had with Martin Short. I don't know much more than that about it. Huh. Um, but I was surprised to see that he got mad about that. Extremely. Yeah. Um, and he seemed there, you know, there's a weird thing. Like he seemed, uh, when the Hitler thing came up, he seemed like genuinely offended that anyone would suggest he, so he does have a line well, as much as, as much Canadian. as he'll put lesbian porn on his parents' car. He well, does have a line somewhere. Go into like a uh, fucking brisk dressed as Hitler or whatever it was. Yeah. Brisk. Bar mitzvah. <laughs> Bar mitzvah. A brisk. <laughs> that would be even funnier actually. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like um, that is so not okay. Yeah. And just a random family, not like someone you know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in like 50 years when no one definitely was alive during the Holocaust. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know what you were going to say right there. I was like, People are always going to remember Hitler. But no one believes it anymore. <laughs> no, 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 but like, yeah. there's, there's still like crusty old people that are like, I was in this cabin and this guy saved me. And then everyone around him stands up and they're like, oh my God, he saved all these people. There's still a ton of people that he can crusty offend. Crusty old people. Yeah, Craig, as Craig always says, not quite six million, but there were a few. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's, the, what's the last clip? Uh, him and Norm. Oh yeah, as, as always, we try to squeeze Norm into every episode. Definitely. Uh, but first I'll just talk about a little... Um, so basically Tom Green did that internet show that was essentially just a podcast. Um, and then he got back into doing stand up like 12 ish years ago now. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, he did stand up when he was like 15, um, for, you know, three, four years and then got back into it when he was, you know, 40 years old. Um, but he, do, he's not, I guess the name Tom Green doesn't necessarily carry as much weight, but I do think he did Cache. it. He did it the right way, where like he'd play like small clubs and shit like that, rather right. than kind of trying to use his name to put. I, I will say I did watch a little bit of his stand up, and he's kind of, like he's kind of listing his credits a little bit, which is something mm. famous people do that I don't love. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't. To be honest, I didn't give it enough of a chance. Um, so I don't know how great he is at stand up, but he's been doing it for like twelve years now. I saw he was at Laugh Boston not that long ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's play, uh, him and Norm a little bit before we shove off. You know, you did, you had, uh, the show Tom Green's house. Yeah, well, it was so much fun when you would come do the show all the time, yeah. and it was amazing, because when Drink we- Drink like crazy. Built, uh, the studio in my living room, and you go, oh, geez, I wonder if I built a studio in my living room if Norm MacDonald would come over <laughs> every time I asked him. And he did almost come over almost every time. Do you remember time. the time I came, I did the Tonight Show? Mm -hmm. With another guest was Pitbull. Yeah, and then you brought Pitbull's <laughs> band with you. And we sat up and did the whole show. We did the show before the Tonight the Show. Same line up. Line up. But that's the thing, right? Yeah, but, yeah, we had him on before the Tonight Show. <laughs> that's what's amazing about this. Pissed off there. Now, is, is that what's exciting about this? It's uh, exciting, but I feel like we're just a cheap Tom Green knockoff. Like you did it for how uh, many years did you do that show? I did it for oh, well, you know, it's it's just it's uh, it's web broadcasting. It's the future, man. Everyone's everyone's uh, jumping well, in. You did I, it in the past. Pop. Yeah, that's true. I was just trying to basically find a way to build, like, uh, you know, a Johnny Carson show, you know? That's the shit I love about Norm, is the very the little, the subtle things, like, because it's the future, man, and Norm goes, but you did it in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see? But again, add one on to the influences, you yeah. influence Norm MacDonald, and that, yeah. I genuinely believe Norm MacDonald Live is the greatest talk show of all time, as I say every week, mm -hmm. so Tom Tom Green had some in, a hand in influencing that. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the lack of credit this guy gets is unbelievable. Not People happening. should be swarm when you if he comes to your town to do stand up. You should be swarming yep. that club for God's sake. Give no Tom respect. Green a little credit. Um, you think of anything in comedy? Comedy. Tom Green did it first, apparently. Pretty much. He invented stand up too. He was fifteen <laughs> and uh, we in the back in the cat scales. He was doing fucking. <laughs> um, I don't know anything else about so, uh, this Tom Green. What's, what's nice about uh, this show that we're doing specifically on Tom Green mm -hmm. is almost like we are expecting him to die and we wanted him to, to want to get... <laughs> typically we yeah. do this kind of episode right after someone's died and we've done like six. <laughs> well, yeah. I uh, I always think of like, uh, if I think of a guy like Bob Newhart or something, who mm. certainly deserves an episode, <laughs> I think like... Should I just wait? <laughs> <laughs> like, should I just give it a few months? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like at the rate they're dropping and who's dropping, he's kind of in that club. Right. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Luckily, uh, 
That, that, that's what I like doing this show for is obviously we talk about a lot of very famous guys as well, but like I, my favorite episodes are kind of paying homage to the guys that uh, don't get enough credit probably. Right. Um, and Tom Green certainly fits that mold. Uh, anything else before we leave the folks here? I think we hit everything. I think so. Beautiful. It's pretty solid. Um, all right, folks, then make sure you go to patreon.com slash blind Mike, or I guess you can put something else behind that slash apparently one day. <laughs> oh yeah. Patreon.com slash very good show. Very good show. It wasn't taken. Really? Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised by that. So that's, that's the whole reason that our podcast is named that. <laughs> I've been shocked since the beginning that we got that name. Yeah. We, we, well, we, I guess it's not 2001 where people are just Googling ve- what, very good shows. What are- <laughs> yeah. We have that Instagram handle too, yeah. which wasn't taken, which was also surprising. Yeah. Right. But I was like, yeah, well, when we were first coming up with that, I was like, well, if we just call the show very good show, huh? And I looked it up and it wasn't taken. I was like, we kind of have to. Yeah. What, a, what a journey. Yeah. That's, that's, how, uh, it, <laughs> that's how it happened. That's how the sausage is sure made. Sure is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, patreon.com, uh, you know, support, uh, both shows and, uh, support the show for free for God's sakes on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, everywhere you get podcasts. It helps the algorithm. It helps people find the show. I guess they tell me. Um, so make sure you do that. Average nobodies. Mm-hmm. And, um, Walter does he podcast. even do that podcast anymore? Matt? I don't know. He wants to do it, but the people he's doing it with don't want, don't to. want. So go listen to the Justin show. Yeah. Go listen to the Justin show. And go listen to, uh, or go, go to Vaulted Podcast in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. If you want to record a podcast, um, support our boy, Matt from Rhode Island. Uh, he does a great job. And you can film stuff there as well. Uh, so it doesn't have to just be a podcast. Really yeah. anything you want yep. to record. Hit up uh, Matt from Rhode Island and go to Vaulted Podcast in Pawtucket. And um, that's it. We'll talk to you guys next time.